But she had spurned that. And I thought, I wonder if this contributed to this. Maybe she's gone through some real personal horrors in her life. And uh, maybe if I'd gone through those same things, I'd have some trouble too. But I thought of the danger of her entering into eternity estranged from the God who loves her. And I kept not stop thinking about what has prevented her from faith, from believing, from accepting the truth. It's a great thing, you know, that someone would do that and suggest, oh no, no prayer for my, my old friend here, my, my family member. No, no prayer. You know, God still loves the person who could say that. And there's still hope as long as that person has life and breath. But you know, that's a sadness, that's a tragedy. Because we are so blessed that we have a God who does care. A God who is bringing us through so much, and sometimes that He's bringing us through things we don't notice. We can absolutely trust Him. No wonder we should revere Him. Our Maker, we should indeed revere Him. I think about the trust that a child has. I remember when I was a, a child, a boy, I was older than my sister. It's the second time my sister's here to serve today. But when I, and I didn't mention this. But when I was a boy, I made my mom every night promise me something. For a long period as I was a boy, I made my, my mom promise me something. My mom had lots of faults. My sister would tell you that too. My mom had lots of faults. She worked herself to death really in many ways for my sister and I. Very great discouragement, a single mom. In the 50s, there was almost no divorce. Uh, but compared to today, almost no divorce. My mom was a Christian trying to live for the Lord. She had married, unfortunately. And the man, my father, had left her. She worked two full-time jobs. Randy Rose, that's me, often went to bed at night thinking, she's close to the edge. She might take her life. Somehow, I had it in the back of my mind that she might also take my life and my sister's life. Things were bad in our home. Things were hopeless in our home. I knew many things about my mom that may have been good. One of them was that my mom would not lie. I told you about this many years ago. You might remember this story some old time in this room. But I made my mom virtually every night for a long period of time in my theater. And she didn't know this. But I actually made her promise something about the next day. Because I wanted, I knew I could count on her word. And if she said to do something the next day, I knew it would. And I was safe that night. I think God loves us. When I was a boy, not having a dad, to know I had a heavenly father meant a lot. In fact, it made, next to those promises I got out of my mom each night, it made a difference in everything. To know that there was one who was beyond the skies, but he loved me and cared about me. That is the same God you have. Absolutely he does care. Why, there are children tonight, and maybe we grew up this way, many of us, that we went to bed, and Sometime later, our parents went to bed, but we never knew that, really, because we went off to sleep, and we just assumed they stayed up all night, checking the windows, checking the locks, you know, tucking us in again, that was necessary. And of course, it wasn't that way, but we thought we were safe. So we looked under the wings of our parents, and all was well, under their wings, their feathers. Well, the truth is, we are under the, the wings of Almighty God. We ought to revere Him and no one else. Why, it's insulting to revere other than He for all He has done for us. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in His love. He will joy over thee with singing. Now, in these weeks, we've been looking at this one verse, Ephesians 2, verse 10, this, 10, this thought of workmanship. We have thought of it from various angles. There have been a number of different truths. They are listed in our bulletin this morning. Number one is that if God is the one who has made us, then the things that he's done to put us together as we are, his workmanship also. 
And those things, each part is intended, and each part is needed or vital. Things do not happen in your life because of a mistake. The hard times, the horrible times, God's always still been aware. You say, I can't bear that thought. That I've gone through such things as I have gone through, and he could have prevented them. Maybe that's that, what that woman in the hospital was thinking. Don't pray for my, my friend. Don't pray for her. Because I personally, I want to stop you. Because I don't believe there is such a God. He's certainly not mine, but he cares for me. I want to insist to you that each part is intended and each part is needed. That we are today the workmanship that God continues to work in. Number two, a thought that's very important.
We've got one, two, three, four. Number five, we can be less hard on ourselves. Sometimes we wonder why we are not the perfect object or production of his producing. That we're not a workmanship, an object of his workmanship, and that we're not quite without error. That somehow we are weak, that others are good, that others are better than we are, that we can't attain at the sun. I know personally I used to resent the first person pronoun I throughout Paul's writings. Too much about Paul, too much, too much, too much! I thought, whew, how can any of us ever be a table to that or like that? The truth is, every one of us is different. That's part of this panic plan, apparently, in workmanship. Every one of us is lacking until we receive the Savior. But we are His work. We are needful of His continued work. We need, as again a potter working with His clay, we need his strong fingers to form us on the wheel and to put us into the shape we ought to be, and none of us even at our end, and translation of the heaven will that will finally be finished. Not until then. And he sometimes is going to use difficult pressure and hard pressure as the wheel moves to effect the change he wants to see in us. But we can trust him in that. And we can trust him in what he's doing. We can trust him to have a plan. And you and I, as part of this, we need to see it's his doing. It's his doing. The wind keeps going and turning. It's his doing. It's his doing. Not saying that to say that we do not have a heart. But please know this. Whenever an innocent, a virgin at the meal, at the meal comes and tries to move in and put his fingers in the pot with the excellent uh, potter. Things are going to go wrong. Ephesians 2.8.9. What is the salvation? Our input, as sincere as it may be, is not only extra, it's and, and, and I'm not needed. It's destructive. And the, and the actual pot begins to wobble. And very often, the very place of our losing this Advancement, perhaps, or recognition of the truth is when we have these thoughts that we are pretty good, really, after all. And we have something really honest that we offer God. Some people don't have it. And we forget the marriage is His, the doing is His, the construction is His. We have a part. I've noticed that God hardly ever works in someone who even claims to be a believer against that person's will. His desire that you become an advanced or a growing believer in Christ will not be done over your dead body, will not be done despite you. Don't, don't forget those verses that speak about how that is he that gives us the will he do. He does that. That's how great he is. By this God, he doesn't want us to be overburdened by that which we cannot have great force of the And when we are suffering and struggling with a guilt conscience as far failing and our stumbling, and look at how our mouth is making it, I'm, right now I can't get to base one, and I'm struggling. Hey, listen, God's never been a struggler, but he knows strugglers thoroughly. And he loves them, each one. Have a number of children, they're not the same. Sometimes one is a struggle. God knows our struggle, our need. He is, after all, the one who made us. He's the one who made us, we can trust him. He's the one who made us, and he will never stop cheering and rooting for us. He values us, he sees our significance. There is joy. And somehow, miraculously, we bring him joy. Don't be too hard on yourself. But don't give up seeking him. Every day, we, as believers in Jesus Christ, have the right to experience him in a personal way. These devotions, you know people are doing, they are very worthwhile. Spending time.
time with Jesus is a privilege that if they knew better, princes and kings and queens would seek after. That someone has been united. The privilege of knowing him, enjoying him, being significant and being held significant in his eyes. That's worth any joy or privilege hungered after by the world. When I was a boy, I read, probably not the youngest boy, but I remember reading about Voltaire. Voltaire was a man who lived during the Renaissance, who near the end of his life came to respect God a little bit, but oh, he fought religion and God so much in his life. I think, I think, ooh, what a sorry contribution. But some believe, there might be some evidence, on his deathbed, finally, Voltaire, finally, as an old man, admitted to the truth of a personal God. I trust so. Man's in trouble. Man can't make it. Man can't make it. You can't make it. I can't make it. Without the great artist, craftsman, workman, God, loving me and forming me. Our Father, we pray your blessing over these things. I pray that you'll bless and forgive this creature for weakness. And I pray, God, that you'll bless by your spirit that things received might be well applied by the divine applier. We pray your blessing that there be truth and truth received and truth applied and lived to your glory. Help us to love you and acknowledge you as the great God, the maker, worthy of our reverence, our love. Father, bless. And among us, Lord, perhaps there's one who has never acknowledged, oh God, you as very God of God. Or Jesus Christ never trusted him as their own Savior. Maybe they need help in that regard. Won't you bless that they reach out for help? Perhaps this pastor, perhaps somebody godly in our church, to bless them and help them in this matter. Don't let us wait. Don't let us wait. Father, thank you for your love and your gifts. We thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. Oh God, we're bold as we're invited to come in his name. 